Before that, Chancellor Jeremy Hunt could squeeze public spending further in a bid to fund any tax cuts in tomorrow's spring budget. But public service workers say prioritising politically driven tax cuts over improving public services is completely wrong. Well, joining now to go over this is GB News' economics and business editor, Liam Halligan, with On The Money. Liam, you're the man with a plan. It's tax cuts or die, surely. Can the Chancellor of the Exchequer pull a rabbit out of the hat? It's pretty clear, Martin, there is now going to be a tax cut of sorts tomorrow. It's not going to be a cut in the headline rate of income tax. It's going to be a cut, another cut, in the headline rate of national insurance, precisely as you and I were discussing on your show yesterday. Now, back in January, the Chancellor cut the headline rate of national insurance from 12p in the pound to 10p in the pound. And I think tomorrow he's going to announce that's going down to 8p in the pound. The, those combined cuts will give the average worker around a £900 boost in their annual take-home pay. The first cut came in from January. I think the second cut will come in from July. Uh, it's cheaper, as we get discussed yesterday again, to do a cut in the headline rate of national insurance rather than the headline rate of income tax because pensioners pay income tax, landlords pay income tax on the rent that they receive. And so if you do a cut in the headline rate of national insurance rather than income tax... Workers benefit from the national insurance cut, but pensioners and landlords don't, so it's cheaper. I think the other thing that's worth saying about the headline rate of national insurance is that national insurance applies in Scotland, whereas income tax, that's controlled north of the border by the Scottish government. So this will apply to all workers in the UK across the board, which is what the Tories want, particularly north of the border, where they're trying to limit Labour's electoral gains north of the border. Labour are going to do well in Scotland, it seems. They only have two MPs north of the border. That's going to go up quite a lot if you believe the opinion polls. You mentioned public spending also, Martin. I don't think we're going to hear too much about public spending tomorrow because budgets are generally more about tax revenues rather than spending. There could be some spending announcements, but they're more likely to happen in the autumn statement or another comprehensive spending review. It's worth saying, though, that there are 7.6 million people still on NHS waiting mm -hmm. lists for elective treatments. That is a near record. Uh, in 2025, the NHS, uh, the money it gets from the government, if you add in inflation, is likely to fall in real terms. That's what the Institute for Fiscal Studies say so there'll be an increase in money for the NHS, but if you add in inflation, it will be what we call a real terms fall of just over 1%. And that could be the biggest drop in NHS spending or one of the biggest drops annually since the 1970s. And beyond the NHS, it's also worth saying, as we've been hearing here on GB News, there are quite a few English councils, local authorities in England that are looking down the barrel of a pretty bad situation. Four in ten English councils are at risk of going bust over the next five years. That's according to the respective accountancy firm Grant Thornton. So Jeremy Hunt is likely to talk about that tomorrow as well. Local government finance. We've seen Birmingham uh, announce it's got a Section 114 notice. It's saying it can't meet all its requirements. Uh, and that's the biggest council in Europe, obviously Britain's second city. So... The public finances are tight, Martin. Everybody can feel that. But Jeremy Hunt is trying to get loads of little measures, raising taxes, you know, hitting the rich, more duty on business class airfares, making the non-DOM tax status that lots of wealthy foreigners living in the UK make use of a bit less generous, perhaps a few other wheezes here and there to raise taxes. So he can carve out the room for manoeuvre to do that headline tax cut. It's not a headline income tax cut. That would have been too expensive. It's a headline cut in national insurance. But if you add together, Martin, the cut in national insurance we saw in January and the cut in national insurance, which I'm now saying will happen from April, the average worker in the UK will be about 900 quid a year better off, which is not to be sniffed at. OK, Liam, we've had a sneak peek there what the Chancellor of the Exchequer might do. I think you'd make a blooming good Exchequer, Chancellor of the Exchequer. What would you do, Liam, uh, to, to capture the imagination of a wailing interest from the public who feel, oh, come on, give me something exciting. What would you do, Liam? 
Well, what I would do if I was Chancellor, I, I think that ship has sailed. Various people have said <laughs> I should be Governor of the Bank of England as well. Fat chance. Um, what I would do, precisely as I wrote in my Sunday Telegraph column uh, at the weekend, is I would raise what they call the personal allowance. Now, mm. yeah, no one pays income tax unless they earn above about 12 and a half grand a year. The average wage in this country is about 30 odd grand. So 12 and a half grand a year is a, a, is a low wage. It's often a part time wage or so on. But, you know, many people do important jobs earn 12, 15 grand a year and fair, 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 fair play to them. But you don't pay tax until you reach 12 and a half grand a year. And then from 12 and a half grand a year, you pay the basic rate of income tax up to about 50 grand. That's at 20 percent. And then you pay 40 percent above 50 odd grand. And then you pay 45 percent above 125 odd grand. What I would do, Martin, is I would raise that personal allowance that you don't pay any tax up until, I'd say, £20,000. Why would I do that? Because that will take a lot of people out of income tax and because a lot of people earn in between 12 and a half and 20 grand, they pay income tax, but then they get it back in in-work benefits. It's all really, really complicated. They, they miss out. They, 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 sometimes when they earn more money, they actually end up paying a lot more tax. It, they keep very little of the extra money that they earn, so it discourages people from pushing themselves to work more, work harder, get better jobs and so on. It's a disincentive. So what I would do to make the system a lot fairer, to really regenerate uh, work, to tackle this real e epidemic we've got in the UK of, of a sort of people of working age not working, to encourage people to come back to work and to keep it simple, to make fewer civil servants paying benefits, much, much more straightforward and cost effective. Raise the personal allowance from 12 and a half grand to 20 grand. Plain, simple. Everyone can understand it. That's what I do. Now, in the short term, that may cost the state some money. And a lot of civil servants in Whitehall sucking their pencils and furrowing their brows, they'll say, oh, it's far too radical. We can't possibly do that. I would do it. I think it would absolutely reinvigorate the British economy. I think it would indicate that we are an enterprise economy. We reward work. We reward people who get up in the morning and contribute to the economy. And we have got a problem of working age, workless people in the UK now. We need to tackle that. We need to solve it. So in my view, radical measures are needed. And that, Martin, is probably why I'm not the Chancellor of the Exchequer. Getting Britain working again gets my vote. Liam Halligan, always on the money. Thank you, my friend. Superb stuff.